Welcome to episode 12 of In the Abstract, the Lakeland Title Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Johnson, the founder and owner of Lakeland Title. For this episode, I decided we were going to do uh, Louisiana homes that have been featured in films. And for that, I brought on a good friend of mine, Nathan Velasquez. He's a uh, Baton Rouge born, now a uh, citizen of LA. So he moved out there and he's a film producer, uh, filmmaker, film writer, just and now film critic. And so just everything film, Nathan's your guy. So thank you for coming on. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And yeah, movies, movies all the time. So even if you need to identify a house, it sounds like that's what we're doing today. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's what I came up with. I picked nine houses that have, are in Louisiana that have been used in uh, film. And I think there's uh, one TV in there. Uh, and so I'm just going to show you pictures of those and we're going to see if you can identify them. I'm going to do this. In yeah. kind of a root, I'm going to do this in kind of a rudimentary way because I'm not, you know, the expert filmmaker like you are. So I'm just going to do a share screen and just show you pictures in, in preview. And so well, that's just, we're going to do I it. actually, I was at a, a restaurant because those now exist out here in Los yeah. Angeles. Um, and so me and my girlfriend were outside, uh, kind of the line, we waited for like five minutes and I got to the front and we were waiting, to be, had table to be open for us to go in. And the guy that was kind of like the bouncer was kind of like, he had a bit of a Southern accent and he looked at my license. That was the thing. And he was like, Oh, from Louisiana, where are you from? And I was like, Baton Rouge. He's like, no, he was from Baton Rouge too. So we were sitting there and like right before we went, I, it was a bit weird because he was just rattling off Acadian Island, yeah. Florida government. And I was like, Hey, I can name streets too. Corsi, Blue Bond. Yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, even more locations going on this week talking and, about Louisiana. Yeah. I didn't have any friends in common. Cause I mean, everybody in Baton Rouge this, is usually separated by two or three degrees of separation. I guess we didn't talk long enough to, okay. we didn't talk long enough to talk about that, but honestly, no, if we had another five minutes, then we probably would have found something. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just, it's inevitable with Baton Rouge. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let me see if I can share it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's the first one. So let's see if you can identify this one. Oh gosh. It's, it's an old, it's an old movie. So it may be a little. Ooh. I am. Gosh. Okay. Can it, is this like 20, uh, not 20 questions. Like who wants to be a millionaire? Is there kind of like, <laughs> do I get lifelines? I already feel like, I feel like such a putz already. Like I don't quite have the answer for this. No, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank on this one. Okay. Um, hold you on, do, hold if you on. you do really well, maybe we'll send you some Lakeland title merch. That, that's the only thing you could possibly win. Oh, see <laughs> now you just, you, you ramped up, you ramped yeah. up the pressure with that one. Um, uh, I'll give you some more hints. It's, uh, it's out on old Perkins, like kind of behind Blue Bayou. Okay. You, you can, can't really see it from the street. It's just a huge plot of land. Oh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to call on this. What, what part of the movie do we see? What, like, what, I'm sorry, what part of the, do we see the house or do we see, like, I see there's a tennis court back there. Yeah, we do see the house. It's from, this one is from the toy, the Richard Pryor. Oh, okay. Yeah, so old, okay. Old movie. So maybe before your time, but it's one of the most uh, famous like movie houses in Baton Rouge. So. I should have known that. I should have known that. That is, you get a lot of. You do get, I can't believe I, I, I didn't go for that one. You get a whole bunch of Baton Rouge in that. We were yeah. talking about that like a few weeks ago. Where else do they? Well, I don't know. That one might come up again. So I don't want to just rattle off yeah. places and then have it come up. But yeah, AC Lewis, the, the big developer, he built this house. And now Dan Hurd, uh, who owns that engineering firm, he now lives there. And like when the president comes to town, usually, and they do fundraisers, it's usually at that house because it's an amazing, huge house. And I've been inside it and it's amazing. Like there's, you know, one of those huge garages uh, yeah. with all kind of cars parked back there and, and the interior of it, the furnishings inside are maybe worth, you know, almost as much as a lot of the house. It's like, it's got some very expensive furnishings. So it's a nice, it's Oh a nice God, place. I can, I can imagine how much, how many acres is that thing sitting on? Because oh, I, I can't, no I can, I can only imagine it's gotta be more than what's in this photo. Oh yeah. It's a huge, huge piece of property. I mean, when you go down old Perkins, I, I mean, I wouldn't even, be able to guess how many acres, but when you go down old Perkins, you'll see there's this white fence yeah. for a long, long okay. way. That's all, all his property. And you just can't really see, I think you can maybe see like the horse stables from the street, but that's, that's about it. You really can't. The horse stables. Like, yeah. I love that. There's oh, yeah. even, I was surprised by how many people, that's something I only figured out, like even during this quarantine, how, I mean, this is way off. We're not even talking about land or homes here, but like how many people have horses? I, if yeah. you had asked me like before, I would have thought maybe like two years ago, like, Oh, that's for like the super rich, like the uber rich, yeah. they have horses. But 
bunch of people just keep their I even found out my cousin bought a horse. She just got a horse, hangs out of the stable, goes to visit it. So who knows? Maybe that's yeah, a dream I'm, I'm supposed to have. Yeah, my friend lives in Central. She has a couple horses and a little barn on her property. And so yeah, you can people do that's it. That's insane. Maybe yeah. I'll get one for my apartment. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I don't know if I don't know if that would work so much in LA. They might freak out, but I'd probably be breaking so many different codes that they have here, restricting whatever they're restricting. Yeah, we'll exactly. Yeah. So, all right. So now on to the next one. All right. Oh, did, did my screen sharing go away? I think it did. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let me see if I can get it back here. Okay. This mm. is another. This is another kind of older movie. So. Older movie. What? Uh, give me. Give me the decade we're working in. Uh, maybe the eighties. I think this movie came out. The eighties. Okay, I I imagine this has got to show up somewhere, but it's like the movie I always go to when you talk about movies made in Baton Rouge. Is this Sex Lies and Videotape? This, this isn't Baton Rouge. This is in. Uh, this is in Natchitoches. This is in Natchitoches. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not. Okay, which which one is this? Steel Magnolias. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's Steel two Magnolias. for two on ruining it right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Five minute critic, everyone. If you want reputable movie information, exactly. Yeah, uh, it's going to get uh, a little more obscure. As there are a couple more obscure ones in there too, but there are some mainstream ones that I think you should get. But yeah, Steel Magnolias. It's actually a bed and breakfast now, so you can go stay there if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah, they're love totally, Steel Magnolias. That movie's so even, sad. I think it's even called like the Steel Magnolias Bed and Breakfast or something like that. They're they, you know, they're not. Hot That's got to be. Today. It's got to be such that. Yeah, it must be a huge destination hotspot. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, why does it keep? Why does the screen? You might be, up? you might be, when you do screen share, I think is it, it might be asking you what window you want to share. You might be sharing like just that one uh, okay, preview. Gotcha. That, so when you close it, it might be like, oh, we're done now. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. This, that should have fixed it. Okay. Okay. So hold on. Is this from, this has been in a few, but there's one particular I'm thinking about, but it's been, it's pretty iconic. It's been in some. Some okay, I've got I've got two things. I'm gonna go out on a limb with the first one. I might be wrong, so I'm gonna get two. Is right. it? Um, is this the Patriot? I don't know if it was in that one, and I don't think so. Okay, is it? Um, I I feel like I, there are like three different names that I'm trying to feel like it's a it's a. Is it the Beguiled? I that movie know. with Nicole Kidman, wherever they were like in a plantation during the Civil War. Maybe I've never seen that movie, so. You could be right oh, on that. But it looks kind of like it because it's got like in that movie, it's the same type of like you've got the trees going over like the the path that goes to the huge plantation house. It's not yeah. that one. I mean, I've never seen that movie, so I don't know, but it's it's Oak Alley. So it's been used in a bunch. OK, the one okay. that I was referring to with it's uh, Louis's house from Interview with the Vampire. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. such a good movie. Oh, yeah. Such a good movie. Classic, classic. So that's what I was thinking of, but it's been used in a ton of them. So you could be right on Beguiled. We'll have to research that further. Or if somebody well, here, wants to. <laughs> if someone wants to, let's see. I, okay, well, it, I assume this one isn't going to come up, isn't going to come up later. This thing has been used in so many things. Yeah, look, it's got, it's been on Midnight Bayou, oh, Ghost yeah. Hunters. Oh, Beyonce used it. Didn't know oh, that really? one. Okay. Um, what, Days of Our Lives? <laughs> also, it was in Primary Colors. Yeah, I did. I did see that in my research, but I didn't know if anybody really knew that movie or not. I have never seen Primary Colors before. Oh, so good, so good. Yeah, I mean, I'm a political nerd, so I liked it. <laughs> hey, I, okay, all right. Is that was that is that one of those that was written by like Aaron Sorkin or something? Uh, I can't remember. It was, originally, when it came out, it was anonymous. The person, I think, the person later did re reveal who they were, but at first, it was, oh. it was written by anonymous uh, because it was about Bill Clinton. And so, mm. uh, but then the person Classic. later came out. I don't think it was Aaron Sorkin, but but I didn't really pay attention after because he came out and and you know revealed himself after kind of the hype had died down. So yeah, I don't think I was really paying attention. So. All right, on to the next one. Okay, this one the oh, movie the, the movie's not obscure, but the house may be because I don't think it was in a whole lot of the movie, but. Is this across from the LSU Lakes? Yes, it's on East okay. Lake. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, I'll go again for the decade. What decade is this in? 
This is relatively recent. Relatively recent. Yeah. And the whole, um, movie, the whole movie was filmed in Baton Rouge at LSU, and they've done two sequels to it. So there's a... a okay, I'm not going to... Do you mind have given me... I almost... Pitch Perfect came into my mind when you said LSU. The sequels, that one definitely. So just delete the help that you gave me. My guess is Pitch Perfect. Yes, it is the glass house and Pitch Perfect is what they call it. So, okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't. I saw. I actually only saw the second one because I actually I was a PA on the second one. Okay. So I ended up checking that one out. I I worked on. I helped on the scene wherever they're actually in Canada, but they're actually like across from the observatory. Okay, uh, well, that's a big crowd scene because a friend of mine was an yeah. extra in either two or three. She was in one of them in a big. Yeah, that's scene. that one. That's that one. That was the first, I, that was the first, it was incredible, but I also got slightly disillusioned with the whole process oh, because yeah. it was like show up at like 11 a.m. And then at like, no, at, yeah, at like 11 a.m. And then the following 3 a.m. I was like, are we, is it wrong for me to ask how much longer we're going to be, we're going to be here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that how but okay, pitch in the, perfect. In the, movie, in the movie business, isn't that how they get paid? Like it's a, it's full day, so they try to keep you there as long as possible. Or yeah, and there's no like with that, especially the PAs. I don't know how it worked for the bigger people, but yeah, I think I think it's pretty much like we're just going to be going. Oh yeah. yeah, as long as we need to be going. Oh, yeah. But okay, all right, pitch perfect. I like it. Okay, now this one's obscure, but I had to include it because it, you know, I just I'll explain why later. But this is pretty obscure. You probably won't get this because the movie was relatively obscure also i think from the maybe 70s maybe 80s i'm not really sure but okay okay well first of all i'm liking i'm liking the house a lot as far as the houses that i'd like to live in i would be fine living in this one what what decade are we talking about here i think it was the i think it was the 80s 70s or 80s 70s or 80s it was when i was a kid because i think i was unknowingly an extra in the movie that huh I don't think I was old enough to realize what was going on, but I think I was an extra in this one. <laughs> a lot of people in Baton Rouge were. Okay, wait. It was, all filmed, the... it was all filmed on. It was filmed on LSU campus mostly. Yeah, is this stop the the? Oh my gosh! It, it's the one. Is it the one with Dennis Quaid yes. and John Goodman? Yes. Okay. What what's What's the name of the? I, I I have not seen it, but I know it. Everyone talks about it. It's, Everybody's all American. What's it called? Everybody's all American. Everybodyy's all American. And so that's this, right. That's right. Yeah, it's filmed on LSU's campus. And this is the Theta Zai House, which was my fraternity. Uh, and they in the opening scene, one of the opening scenes, they go to a party at this house. So okay. So there's scenes of them standing outside, then they go inside into the party room, and there's a big party in there. And then a lot of people in Baton Rouge were extras because the football scenes were filmed like actually at an LSU football game. Like it was during halftime at an LSU football game so they could have all the crowd already there. And they filmed a lot of the football scenes. This is even, it's on my watch list on, on Letterboxd. What, what is it about? What is it? What's the movie? It's kind of like a fictionalized uh, life story of Billy Cannon, kind of. Like it's kind of oh, okay. Billy Cannon, but not really, uh, you know, just kind of college football star who kind of, you know, peaks in college and kind of you know, has this downfall after that. Jessica Lange's in it. John Goodman's in it. You know, Dennis Quaid's Love a Jackson star. Lang. So it's got a good cast and, you know, it's, it's cool just to see all the Baton Rouge stuff in it. That's the thing. That's I, I, that's why I love watching movies that, that, that were in Baton Rouge. Just check. I mean, the, the, the reason that everyone loves seeing movies that were from their hometown and what was, wasn't there a famous bar that's shown in that movie that like burned down at some point? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to go rewatch it. What was that? What was that bar? I thought I heard that, like in the 2000s or something, there was a very famous bar around LSU that like burned down. Like oh. it might have been near Overpass Merchant, possibly. I don't know. I can't remember a bar burning down that that was famous. I mean, there was the oh, well. timeout. There was the timeout lounge, but that wasn't near LSU. So. Mm. Okay. And that wasn't that wasn't famous at all for anything. <laughs> Maybe local famous, maybe just local famous. Yeah. Now I, I don't remember that. I'm not sure. But I'll have to look into that though. <laughs> okay. So this next one you should get. You should get this next one. Because this is a, a relatively, you know, recent movie. Uh, you're setting you're setting it up for me to look like a total ass. <laughs> 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 I mean, I researched these, so I had to kind of, you know, do some Googling to find all these. But yeah, this one, yeah. hopefully you'll get this one. Hold on. No, I'm being. It's Evergreen, looks... Evergreen Plantation is the name of it. 
it looks like one of those recent like I'm gonna say it looks like one of those maybe maybe based on the tragedy of slavery. It looks like it, it was it based on a kind of like an older Civil War era type movie. Yes, yes, it was a yeah Civil War era. Is this Django? Yes, that's Candy okay. Candyland from Django and Chain. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, he's a uh, plantation. Was did Don Johnson show up in that movie? At Django and Chain is the Tarantino movie. I saw it in theaters, and I, I have need to watch it again. I have. I've oh, only seen amazing. it that one time. Yeah, was Don Johnson? Was he in Candyland, or did he have like a rival plantation? Uh, yeah, he had a rival plantation, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So. Candyland. Yeah, nice. I, think, I think his plantation was the first one they go to to find Candyland or whatever to find you know where Django's wife is being held. Yeah, yeah. But okay, this, this was Candyland. So nice. That's yeah. See, perfect. Perfect. Got one. One. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and here's another one that I don't know may or may not be obscure. I'm not sure how many movies you've watched, but let's see. This one was from two of there. This one's been in two of them and maybe more. But that looks so familiar. That looks so. I almost feel like I've been to that place. Is this this isn't in Baton Rouge? No, no, it's not. So it's Felicity Plantation is the name of it. Is this from Twelve Years? I think Twelve it was Years in a Slave. One. Yeah, I think it was. It was in that one also. Yeah, it's been in a bunch of them. Um, yeah, Twelve Years. Twelve Years a Slave was one of them, but also um, All the King's Men, the Sean Penn remake. Right. This was the Judge's House in that one, and also yeah, yeah, Skeleton yeah. Key with Kate Hudson. I never saw Skeleton Key. I actually think I saw, I might have actually seen a scene with this house in it, but I never saw, I never saw all of that one. I really liked All the King's Men. I feel I, like that, that movie is like so shit on. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a really cool movie. Yeah, I liked it too. It, it gets a bad rap, so but I enjoyed it. Yeah, and what, in the end he gets shot in the Capitol, right? And doesn't the blood kind of like go in the crest? Yeah, it goes in the crest and like in all the, the carvings of the, the rivers and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool movie. I like that Very movie cool. a lot. And who else? James Gandolfini was in that, so that might have been. Yeah, that might have been. I I grew up with my dad. Always had uh, the Sopranos on, like in the background when I was growing up. So seeing that as a kid with him, and it was like, whoa, what what the hell? He was down the road. Oh yeah, and Jude Law and Anthony Hopkins and. All that. Right, Jude Law is in it. Yep. So, and a good movie. Good movie. Oh yeah, amazing. And that guy from uh, what's his name from Now You See Me? He was in it too. Uh, not Jesse Eisenberg. No, no, the the FBI agent guy. I can't remember his name. Oh, goodness. I don't remember his name either. Yeah. You know, believe it or not, Now You See Me has not taken up a lot of real estate in my head. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're a little bit dumb, but entertaining. You know, they are what they are. Yeah, I remember the twist of the first one being kind of like, okay. Yeah. Okay, I see you. Cool. Oh, yeah. Now You See Me. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. So second to last one here. Let's see. This is in New Orleans. So I believe it's on a uh, Coliseum. Okay. Like a block or two over from Commander's Palace. Was this okay? There was a m- movie that came out like two years ago called Queen and Slim. This looks a lot like the house in that movie where they kind of like hide out when they're on the run. Is that it's possible, but I was thinking of a, a one with a big star in it. So. One with a big star in it. Okay. Whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Is this Curious Case of Benjamin Button? That's yes. the house that he grows up in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one. That's the one. So. An- another, that movie is also really good. Oh, did yeah. that movie get a bad rap? No, I thought it was pretty popular when it came out. I seem to remember. I think it was up for best movie. I don't know. I feel like that one's not talked about anymore. Yeah, but I think at the time people were into it. Yeah, I remember being kind long. Faded quick. Yeah, it was long. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let that movie. That movie was really good. That movie was really good. Cool oh, yeah. old New Orleans stuff. Yep. Oh yeah. So, okay. And then we got the last one. This is from a TV show, not a movie. So, okay. One of my favorite TV TV shows. So we'll see if you can get it. From a TV show. Okay. Long running TV show. They've done. I think that maybe they're going on a decade now going on a decade now so it's still yeah, on it's still on now. i think they're about to start season 10 i think i was about to say true blood but i know they're not on right now it might have been uh, used in that but it was the is this it was like the main setting for the whole 
It was the main setting for the show. I, I was about like, to say The Walking Dead, but I know that's not really around here. Nah. Hmm. hmm. No way. It's the Buckner Mansion. It's on Jackson Avenue in New Orleans. Also kind of near Commander's Palace. But <laughs> really, I'm gonna you're gonna have to give it to me. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to give it to me. Uh it's the Coven from American Horror Story. The Oh, okay. Okay. I you know, I was on I went through the first season of American Horror Story. I don't know what it was. It might have been the time that I watched it. I might have like dipped out of TV at that time. <laughs> I hear Coven's awesome. I got into American Horror Story late and like binge watched a ton of episodes and that's something you really shouldn't do because it freaks you out you'll think it you know ghosts are going to be everywhere but uh so i got into they are it, everywhere but they I, mean, are I, everywhere. I, I love it i love american horror story i, I watch every every season now but this is okay. still a, this one's still a private residence so you can't actually go in it uh i did go oh. last time i was in new orleans i did go and take a picture outside the front of it but they have signs saying this is a private residence like you know basically don't come inside <laughs> stay away brian yeah exactly but <laughs> But yeah. Well, so. Cool. Okay. Was that the last one? That's the last one. So unless that's you have- very cool. No, I you don't like what are, <laughs> uh, I mean, the things that come to mind for me is yeah, the house in, I mean, I'm a huge Soderbergh fan. So the fact that he kind of has made like five movies in Baton Rouge, I thought that was kind of part of the thing, reason I liked it. Actually, I saw one of his small, it's like a small, stupid movie. It's called Schizopolis. And at the time I had a place at Tiger Manor over at LSU, which is now, I don't know what it's called now. Like the Bradford, I think. Oh, really? And there's a there's a part where a character is driving driving across a lake and they go into a gate and it actually passes the apartment that I used to live in. And I was watching it, like went in that apartment for the first time and I was like, what the shit? What's going on? Yeah. What is that? Where is that right now? And then, I mean, there was that huge spate of movies where you can't really have a Baton Rouge location, but like we got The Host and um, Greyhound and... A bunch of other big movies, Battleship. Well, and a friend of mine just bought a house in a college town. And one of the neighbors was saying that like Steven Soderbergh grew up like right in that area, like a few houses down or something like that. Probably so. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. So, All right. So now that we've been through that, let's uh, talk about what you've got going on. So let's tell us about the five minute critic. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, it was kind of in the midst of probably December. Uh, I like kind of just moved out to LA things were well originally things were opening up and then things here like took a nosedive like I thought I had been where things had been locked down the most and then it was just like nope you can't leave your home like I was they were getting newscasts I was getting pissed off like the newscasts were there saying like make sure that if you leave your home and you're on the sidewalk you're wearing your mask you know to protect so whatever 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 so that was going on and uh, like a month before I was in Vegas just talking with a buddy of mine because we were filming a conference and I, we we're just bouncing off ideas of projects that we wanted to do. And I just, you know, held off that I just wanted to do something. It's just kind of talking about movies. And he was like, you should. And I was like, ah, but it's it's embarrassing. It's stupid being on YouTube and all this. And everyone laughs at you. And he's like, I don't think they do. And I was like, yeah, actually, I feel like that might have been my own anxiety talking in my head. So then it was kind of like everything locked down. I just had that conversation. It was like, I mean, I love, you know, I watch, you, you asked me how many movies. I usually clock like over 100 a year. I mean, it's gone way down as I have a company and everything, yeah. but it used to be at that level. So I usually try to stay dialed in as much as possible. So it's just a fun way to kind of like cultivate some kind of an audience and go through movies and give like a more of an honest opinion. This is something that the more I kind of like keep up with, I used to just not really care. Like just like whatever opinion you have about movies, like if someone ever brought up like, oh yeah, whatever, but Rotten Tomatoes said this. And it's like, well, who? Who gives a shit what Rotten Tomatoes says? Like, just watch it. Like his, um, but I've been more dialed in into like what it is that most other critics are saying. I, critics seem to be like not, and this isn't me saying that you know how follow me. I'm 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 the critic, but it 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 seems like a lot of critics are all they all have the exact same opinion. Like, I don't know if you've been seeing the way that like the Oscars race is going and everything. It's like if you look back on it, it's been happening a long time. We get more of these movies kind of like like Borat or One Night in Miami or Judas and the Black Messiah, like movies that are very message driven, like doesn't really put story first, puts a message forward. And the critics like flock to it. Like most movies that deserve like a 45 or 50% or at like 97%. 
And if you look at like, like most user ratings, like a user rating will be so low, but the critics will say, no, this is one of the best things ever. And you watch and it's like, what's going on here? So I, th I think, I think whenever I kind of was starting to look into the way that people rank movies in the critic world, I think there is a, there's a lapse in judgment there. So it was, it, the more that I was looking into it, it was like, okay, maybe there is like a, a small space I can fill reviews in under five minutes. It's just brutally honest just about like this is shit this isn't shit how it works how how a movie is manipulating you and if it's worth your time or not so that's kind of that's kind of in the last four months how i got into the idea of making five minute critic okay well i thoroughly enjoy it so well thank you thank you and yeah if you have if you have any if anyone watching this has any suggestions on youtube five minute critic I, as it gets more people i want to start having like a podcast on it like a five minute critic podcast where you just have pretty much anyone on and have someone bring a movie and then spend like an hour hour and a half just beating the hell out of it yeah there you go <laughs> the 50 minutes no, so we'll, yeah. So. yeah 90 minute critic <laughs> but yeah that uh that's pretty much that has pretty much been so i'm i'm out here things are open in la now so we are pretty much back to normal so it's okay. getting a little bit tougher because now i'm actually able to so what i really do is my video production company that's what that's the day job so <laughs> that uh now that things are open it, it's getting a little bit i filmed like i woke up early and filmed like five episodes this morning so i can get like a month ahead yeah there you go there you go well, it's only, you know five minutes yeah. so it only takes five minutes to make right <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly there's no cuts in it yeah exactly yeah <laughs> so uh, what was it that made you want to start uh want to start your podcast uh I just, I like podcasts. I like listening to podcasts and uh, I just kind of researched it and, and discovered it wasn't that difficult to do. Um, and also just a way, you know, to kind of showcase my, my customers and people I interact with, kind of give them, a, a, you know, an outlet and platform to come talk about stuff and just kind of do, do kind of fun things. So I just thought it'd be a fun, fun hobby to have. What it, that's kind of why I want to get mine into the the, the, the aspect of having conversations with people. I love that. What, what were some podcasts that kind of got you started on the whole thing? Uh, well, first it's just, I uh, interviewed a friend of mine that was a realtor. And so I just, yeah. uh, she was a residential realtor. So I just kind of got, got her story and then, you know, asked her if she had tips for buyers and tips for sellers and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then I did the same thing with the commercial realtor after that. And so then it's just kind of uh, just whatever pops in my head. So basically, and also like I used to do the morning radio show on Talk 107.3. I used really? to that, yeah, I was uh, kind of one of their legal analysts or whatever, and so they'd have me coming in, you know, at least once every couple of weeks. When and, was that? Uh, oh, that was I don't know, a few years ago. It, I was I was big into that, so uh, that's pretty cool. And so I can go back through old topics from that, and I'll I'll pick up things from that. So that's very cool. Yeah, that's that's kind of the thing that I with. I had wanted to do, I've got like a note note on my notes app filled with kind of topics for like a movie podcast. Cause I always I was like, Oh, one day I have to do a movie yeah. podcast, but it's so much nicer to kind of like, if you watch any one movie kind of like, uh, well, what was, what was one that like, I just did one on um, the assistant. I don't know if you saw that movie yeah. and it's, it's like a drama. It's a drama that ends up like turning into a horror movie halfway through, but not in the, not in a generic sense, more in kind of like the level of suspense racks up and the level of anxiety racks up to where it feels like a horror movie. So, I mean, before I might, you know, write down like, oh, this type of movie that does this and it'd be this obscure thing. But now I've got, I think I'm up to like maybe 16 reviews now. And oh, in wow. each one is kind of like a, a different topic that uh, a different kind of thing that a movie does. So I'm thinking like, I'll just go back through there and I'll write down drama that turns into a horror movie, have someone on and be like, bring a movie that's like this and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Kind of like a cataloging content and also trying to just build a library. Yeah. And then also like uh, I have an episode where I talk about the Louisiana New Home Warranty Act, which covers new construction homes. And so, you know, like today I had a closing with these people who are buying new construction. And so you give them this sheet that is the, you know, Louisiana New Home Warranty Act. And it's like mm -hmm. five, six pages long and they have to sign saying they got it, but no one's ever going to look at it. And so I have a little QR code link you know, sticker that I put on the folder. And I said, if you don't want to read this whole thing, go to my podcast and listen to the episode on the new home warranty act where I explain it to you in yeah. language. And so that's helpful. And then like, there's a, a, you know, groups and things on Facebook when people are talking about leasing an apartment, I can always just like 
put the link to the, my episode where I talk about here's what you need to think about before you sign a lease on an apartment kind of thing. And so, no, that type of thing get, is yeah, get so, good information out there and you know, that's the only way. Like the last five years, I don't think I would have been able. I, I've now taught myself that if I ever need anything, just go right to YouTube and find either the audio or the video that shows me how to do what I have to do. Oh, yeah, like I do that all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tried to do that once. I can do it with most tech. I can do it with almost most video gear. I just need a YouTube video. I tried to fix my car once with that. Oh, yeah. It didn't, it well, didn't help. It's great for podcasting because a lot of the questions I had were answered on, on uh, YouTube videos. You know, it's like, how do I do this in GarageBand or whatever? Yeah. Know, as far as editing and things like that. So, where is this podcast right now? Like, where does it live? Uh, it's all over the place. So, it's on uh, pretty much any of the platforms. So, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google. Yeah. Podbean is the company that hosts it. So, you can always go directly there if you wanted to. Uh, but also, we also put them on uh, YouTube also. So I'm going to start, I'm going to try to start doing the videos, but I'm not really good at the video stuff. Uh, but regardless, the audio always gets pushed to push to YouTube regardless. So. Very cool. Very cool. I, and I love the, I love the way that this format, you and I are both in a box one by the other, like this is now perfectly acceptable. Like before, I remember we even talked a little bit about when you were starting your podcasts, kind of like how, like what's the, and I was kind of trying to help a few clients as well. Like how do you make your podcast video and how do you do it in a way that's like quick? Cause you don't want the turnaround to be take too long. And this yeah. one is like, you can do this totally acceptable now with what the last year has been like. I've, I've, there's been so much terrible stuff that I hate saying good things that came from the pandemic, but this being used to this setting is really yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I have a room in my office set up uh, for when I start doing, you know, in-person guest podcasts again. So we'll see how that works out. And I have a camera. And so I'm going to have to figure out how to work, work that for, for filming it, but yeah, I've got the acoustical panels and everything. So we'll nice. We'll, we'll see if it works out. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Well, so thanks for being on the podcast. If anybody out there wants to, wants to find Nate, you can find him at, at the five minute critic at five men critic on Twitter and on Instagram. He's at Nathan Velasquez eight one two. So you can find him, find him over there and check out his YouTube channel, five minute critic and, you know, get some of those movie reviews. Everybody's got five minutes just, you know, Exactly. Yeah, we got reviews Tuesdays, Thursdays, and on Fridays, we have a weekly movie update, just an update of the biggest news that's happening in Hollywood. Okay. And this is this only current movies? Or are you going back and doing older, older movies too? I'm in the rhythm right now of kind of like the, the schedule of recording, editing, publishing. So it's been more recent movies. Like yesterday, the movie was Sound of Metal. Um, tomorrow's going to be 2001 A Space Odyssey. So there's like oh, a nice. jump in like 53 years there. But yeah, now I'm I'm trying to get now I'm trying to strike the balance of like maybe one Tuesday or Thursday do a new movie, then the next time just kind of go back to uh, to an older movie. Okay, awesome! Can't wait to see it. And I'll be sure to once uh, I'm hoping maybe in the next three months to get like an actual podcast, maybe like once every other week. So I'm gonna be asking you choose whatever, be thinking about it, whatever movie oh, yeah. you want. I'd be I'd be happy to do it. Happy to help. And if you need cool, advice, or, you know some of the stuff that I've learned, feel free to feel free to reach out and ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, thanks for being okay. here. And absolutely. Th thank you, Brian. Yeah. Until next time. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that uh, episode of In the Abstract. Uh, if you need to find me on social media, you can find me at Twitter at B Johnson or on Instagram at BG Johnson. Uh, if you need to find my company on social media, you can find them at Lakeland Title BR and the same thing on Instagram at Lakeland Title BR. Or on Facebook at BR Closing. You can find us over there. Uh, if you want to contact us, you can contact the show uh, podcast at brclosing.com. Or you can contact me personally, B-R-Y-A-N at brclosing.com. Or just give us a call the old-fashioned way, 225-387-5005. So, uh, you know, like and subscribe and do all the things to help this podcast out. Uh, if you have any suggestions for, you know, future topics, future guests, anything like that, just please feel free to let us know. We'd love the input and we'll see y'all next time.